as you are going through the modules for our educational psychology course, you will often find a prompt to respond to one of the field response journal questions. So here's one right here. First of all, we notice the check mark icon, which tells us there's an assignment we need to submit. And then it goes through and tells us what we could complete. Now for the field response journal, I'm going to require you to answer questions 1, 2, 3, and 4. And then you can choose 4 of questions 5 through 12. We'll go back to that in a minute. So on this one, you can see I'm saying that you can respond to question five and or six. These ones are optional, so you can choose to respond to one of them, both of them, or neither of them at this point. It just kind of depends on what you're seeing in your classes. So in the module, I'll give you a quick introduction to what you would write on for this question. But really, I want to show you at this point how to go about responding to a field response journal question because this is a key assignment and I wanted to help you get it right. So let's go ahead and read through this first question here. Question 5. Describe how the teacher incorporates multiple intelligences in his or her instruction. Give specific examples of how these intelligences are utilized and be sure to cite the text in your response. So there are a couple of things that I want you to notice here. First of all, I'm asking about the teacher's behaviors, and that's going to be true in most of the field response journal questions. How is the teacher incorporating the theory that we're learning about? Secondly, I want you to give specific examples. So don't just say, oh yes, the teacher was using multiple intelligences. Say, the teacher was using the linguistic intelligence when he or she did, and then tell me a story. Okay? Third, I want you to notice this last part. Be sure to cite the text in your response. You can't just give opinion in these. I really need you to show me basically a short scholarly response. Reference the text, bring in quotes or ideas, page numbers, etc. to help me see that you really understand the content and are able to utilize the text effectively. The fourth thing that I want to see in these responses, which is not demonstrated here in the question, is vocabulary. I really want you to bring in those key terms from our study guides and from the modules in the text. Okay, so that's four things I'm looking for. How is the teacher utilizing the theory? Give me specific examples, cite the text, and use your vocab. Your response should be about a half page to a full page, single spaced, okay? Single spaced, why? Because I'm from Oregon and I don't want to waste paper. Well, we're not printing these, but that's okay. Secondly, just thinking about my own learning, I have a difficult time reading double spaced text for some reason. There's too much white space and I get distracted. So we're going to stick with single spaced text here, okay? So how do I go about actually responding to this question? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is copy and paste the text of the question into a nice fresh Word document. Let me find one here. There we go. Now it's a really good idea to just go ahead and start a document for your full field response journal. Proper capitalization is good. And then we can use this to answer all of your uh, questions that you choose to respond to. And then when you submit to me, you can just submit the one that's relevant. So what I'm going to do is paste in that question so that I, as the teacher, know what question you're responding to. I don't have to guess what you're trying to answer, okay? All right, now I've got to remember I need to give examples of how the teacher was using it. Those examples need to be specific. I need to reference the text and I need to use vocab. So a really good place to start then would be the textbook. So I'm going to pop back over here to my digital copy of the textbook and oh look, magically, I happen to have multiple intelligence theory up. So I go through here and I notice, okay, Gardner had eight multiple intelligences that he referenced um, that are different ways that people can learn. So maybe I'll start my response with that. Let me pop back over to my Word document and I'd say something like this. According to our text, uh, Howard Gardner believes that there are eight different multiple intelligences that students can utilize when learning information. 
You could, if you wanted to at this point, then go through and list what those intelligences are, or you could say something like this. Well, let me give a reference first. Page 142, there. All right. In Dr. Cox's classroom, I noticed her using three of those intelligences during <laughs> her lesson on mammals. She taught these students a song that contained the uh, unique attributes of mammals. And then I might say, okay, that's musical intelligence. So I'm using my vocab and I'm being really specific about which example goes with which concept, right? She also had students discuss the attributes of mammals and write down those attributes on a guided note-taking form. So that would be what? Linguistic intelligence. Finally, Dr. Cox had her students come up with a physical mnemonic for the attributes of mammals. The mnemonic, uh, mnemonic uh, had to use the body to represent different attributes. Okay, so this would be kinesthetic. All right, so there I've got a reference to the text, I've got a specific example, and I've got some vocabulary scattered through there. A couple things to notice here. Notice that I've used more than one intelligence here. I want to get some decent coverage of the theory, okay? So don't just use one term from the theory and think you're good. Really try to get some broad coverage of the theory within your response, okay? Show me that you know the theory. Now, I also want to see some good, strong analysis here. In some cases, you'll need to explain your, your concepts. So um, here, it's, it's pretty obvious that when we're having the students sing a song, then that's connecting to musical intelligence. But in other theories, you may need to explain why the example you give represents that concept. You may need to give me a little bit more detail. So just watch out for that a little bit, okay? Now... There's some other aspects of Howard Gardner's um, theory that are mentioned in our text. If we turn the page of the book here, at the top of the page, we'll see this information about the entry points. Okay, So rather than focusing on those eight separate multiple intelligences, some people believe we should focus on these six entry points that we might use within a classroom, okay? So giving rich stories would be an example of the narrative entry point. Um, examining or analyzing things would be an example of the logical quantitative entry point, etc. So as you can see, this lesson that I was giving on mammals seems to be focused largely on the experiential. We were having the kids sing songs and do activities and things like that. So it was very much about the experience of learning. Um, so I might go back now to my written response and say Dr. Cox's use of uh, these intelligences represents the experiential entry point, page 143. Ah, in that, see, now here's that explanation. Why? She was emphasizing students' experience of the content rather than analysis or um, lecture, something to that effect. Okay. So this isn't an extraordinarily long response, notice. 
it's actually this one right now is just shy of a half of a page you might want to flesh it out a little bit more but I simply wanted to illustrate for you the the different attributes I'm looking for first the focus on the teacher how they're using the theory second the specific examples from the classroom third the reference to the text and fourth the vocabulary from the theory so you should see all of those here within this response okay now how do we go about actually submitting this well first of all let's make sure we're saving this document as we go okay field response journal save it somewhere you'll find it <laughs> There we go. Now, I'm going to come back here to our Canvas course. All right. Now, if I say within a module that you could respond to a field response journal question, then I will have the assignment submission area for that field response journal question here in the module as well. So you can find that either by clicking the next button and kind of getting through the pages that you need, or you can always go to the modules area We'll just wait for the page to load here a little bit. And we're in module two right now. If you scroll down, you'll see here assignment FRJ number five. That's the one we've been working on, okay? The other way to go about this is to click on assignments here. And then to scroll down to the field response journal area. And they'll all be listed here. So I'm gonna go into FRJ question five right there. And my screen at this point is going to look a little bit different from yours because I am the teacher and not a student. And Canvas takes a while to load the assignment pages sometimes, so we'll just wait for just a minute. There it goes. All right, so here we are at the actual assignment page. Again, yours will look a little bit different because you have the student view, but I did want to point out a couple of things. First of all, notice this link right here. This will take you to the full assignment description for the field response journal. That includes all the formatting instructions and um, the point values and basically everything all in one place. So if you're ever curious about wanting to see everything in one place, there it is right there, okay? Now, for you, oh, also I'll point out the rubric here. This is kind of how I'm grading them, so watch out for that. And actually, we're going to go back to the field response journal that I was writing on just for a minute because I forgot a couple things. First of all, I'd really like you to bold the question so that I can see what question you're responding to. And then if you would, I'd also like you to go in and underline the terminology that you're using from the theory. So it's a little bit easier for me to find, if you wouldn't mind. There we go. So I've just underlined some important things there. Save that again. All right, now you're going to have a couple of different ways that you, that you can submit this. I can't show you this part on the screen, but I'll talk about it for a minute. You should have a Submit Assignment button on here that you click on. And when you do, you'll have a couple of different tabs. One of those will be to upload a document. So you could, if you wanted to, just upload this Word document to me. The problem is that as we continue to add responses to this document, it's going to get a little confusing for me to scroll through and find the response for that particular question, okay? So you could, if you wanted to, create different documents, but then it gets a little messy, so I don't recommend it. The second tab that'll be up there for you is a Google Doc, if you've linked up your Google Docs. So you could put these in Google Docs as well and share those with me. Again, we could have the same problem of, you know, the long document or getting confusing as you have multiple documents. So you just kind of think about what you want to do there. My personal preference would be if you click on, there's going to be a text entry tab. Okay, make sure it's the text entry tab, not the comments field. If you use the comments field, that's about a six point font for me and I'm going to be really cranky. But use the text entry tab and just copy and paste this response that you've written right into that text entry area and then submit it. That way we can keep this long document running, but you're submitting one response at a time for me so it's nice and clean. Okay. 
All right, so those are my recommendations for the Field Response Journal. If you have any questions, please let me know. Don't hesitate. But I wanted to give you this little tip about how to get those started. Good luck, everyone.